So, Dave Boucher here. What I'm going to show today is the budgeting, actuals, and variance differences in presentation. The numbers have changed for some of the presentation purposes. What you see here is a balance sheet of an individual company within the, com within the company that we're working at. So, first thing I want to show is how our budgeted and actual compare in our, in our, in our yearly budget, quarterly budget, monthly budget, so on. This actually is a yearly budget, I mean a quarterly budget, and so what you see is the on this quarterly, first quarter, you have 123 million budgeted, the actual is 119 million. That's a difference of negative 3%. So the main point of how that got to be negative 3% is because our prepaid expenses were so, we were off, we budgeted too much, and so our variance ends up being in a negative 20%. But overall assets, because that was just in the current asset side, overall assets, 0.09% is what we totaled out to be the percentage between the budget and actual, which is very, very good. Now on the liabilities side, the total current liabilities ends up, uh, or is a negative 6% percent percent difference from our budget compared to our actual. And that main reason why that was income tax payable. We had a problem with income taxes on the, on the payable side. And so that's negative 65% is one of the reasons why it's, it's a negative 6%. But overall, because our non-current liabilities and the shareholders' equity especially, our, the budgeted and actual end up being the 0.09% variance, which is, which is relatively good matches the assets. So in quarter two, the variance between the actual and budget is 2.19%, which is very good. And then the total for that for that quarter total asset is 1.46. So one of the reasons why that went up higher is long-term accounts receivable. We had a positive of 20%. And so our budgeted was 2.034, but the actual was a lot higher. We received a lot more than we planned on it, so it was 2.44. On the liability side, liabilities are also negative, and this is a lot higher increase compared to quarter one of 11%. And as, as you can see, that ends up being because of the long-term debt and other current liabilities and so on. But because our non-current liabilities for positive values, along with our equity, end up having also a 1.46% gain. In quarter three, uh, 2.68 was the variance percentage. So our budgeted actual was a lot higher than our budgeted. And that, that one of the reasons why is the cash and cash equivalents had a whopping 75% higher percentage of actual than budgeted in the cash compared to the deferred income tax benefits was negative. We thought we were going to get stuff in there, but we didn't in this quarter three. So in the liability side, liabilities were relatively positive values for the first time. And this mainly was because we had some compensation benefits and other current liabilities ended up being the 12% gain. And so overall, 1.83, almost 2%, was a relatively positive value of our whole liabilities in, compared to the negative of the first two quarters. In quarter four, we ended up having a 90, I mean, a negative 36 percent in the cash, and but we end up having those tax benefits come in, so it, it outweighed it, and so a positive three percent of our actual compared to our budget, which is actually also a three percent gain in the overall current assets. In the uh, liability side, we end up having a positive value also for the current liabilities. It's more stable of 3%. So our total, total liability shareholders equity end up being the 3.05% 3, 3 uh, positive value gain. Next, I'm going to talk about actual versus budgeted and in income and operations for an individual uh, division. So as you can see in this graph here, the actual is in blue and the budgeted is in this light green. So 
want to focus on first is the actual values of the net and net revenue are all higher and the client services if you look up here at the top is a lot higher than what we budgeted so if you look on the left hand side of the actual numbers here client services and the net revenue were a lot higher but then our labor we, we almost got exactly what we thought it was going to cost what you see here that's the direct labor almost exactly right than what we're, what we're budgeting but our direct costs are really really high and so our actual direct costs end up costing us a lot more than what we budgeted but overall uh, even though our revenue was high our expenses end up being a lot higher than, than what we thought what we were budgeting so the main you know total operating expenses you see here is a lot higher and the other other main main ones are the general management and other other general operating everyday operating expenses and salaries and so on end up being a lot higher than what we were budgeting and so if you look at some of the actual numbers over here on the left you know everything from your contributions and your interests and GNA are all a lot higher than what we were actually budgeted so overall it made us have that net income lot and be a loss so you see here we were budgeting a lot higher than what we got and so our net income ends up being a negative five million compared to what we we're thinking is going to be a six six million positive value but it only ended up being a net income of of one so next area is the income direct labor revenue variances by company office so each office itself um, we're comparing in red here is what we forecast values the actual values are the ones in blue and this is the revenue what we we're forecasting in the revenue while the green here is how much we're off either a negative which is down or positive which is up positive meaning that we actually got more than what we forecasted so as you see here so much red so our forecasts were, were way off then our you know, budget was way off than what our actual for this certain year on these companies on yellow over here are the offices that we actually made money or I wouldn't say that that we actually our revenue ends up being higher than what we're forecasting so the three as you can see here the Hartford the New York and the Southeast are all the main big positive ones there are the other ones there's lots of others but main big positives that you can see the blue outweigh the red most of the, many of the other ones were all, all negative and then the main big negatives are in this bold in this bold uh, font as you can see the Northeast CRM um, the lakes office look how, how, how much we forecasted mainly because we didn't either get the contract or a lot of costs ends up being a lot more than, than what we planned budgeted there's several different factors which I'm going to get to in a second and then the Austin El Paso and this other office also had a really large discrepancy in what our actual compared to our forecast was here one of the offices uh, broken down on their on their budget we're going to look at uh, a couple of reasons why maybe some of that forecast was a lot higher than what we budgeted for instance in the security section you see that there's a 76 percent uh, difference of the uh, projected compared to what we actual was and so when we break down looking look into a little bit further in the security section you see that you know the flint the base security the, the main air security was one of the reasons why it was a lot higher and the standard is 160 compared to the 93 what we, what we were actually uh, actually received so you know that's one of the reasons why that was such a high percentage and then recruiting recruiting was a negative 34 percent and that had to do with one of the reasons why um, two or three of those offices were so uh, forecasted down is because we didn't have the right personnel or couldn't find the personnel um, to, to work on those jobs and so that affected some of the some of the projects themselves and so because of that 
our outside consultants fee will ends up being a lot higher, as you can see here, and then two two hundred seventeen percent than what than what we uh, we're actually budgeting for. So those are some of the main reasons why uh, the difference uh, of the forecast compared to the budget on this previous slide. Now here, this what this is showing is the income and, and expenses by month. So what this compares is you know, how much we were making in the red compared to the white um, was our expenses on a monthly basis. So as you can see, in the January through June, January through June, which is, you know, January starts here, is the income ends up ha having a lot higher in, in, in January and May, while it's flat and lower than expenses. And this is because uh, we were working on the individual, working on, on certain, several of projects, but the money wasn't coming in, so we were doing a lot of labor at those those months. But then the, the money started coming in, start starting in July especially, and the projects were end up being completing or or stopping, and so it was just you know salary effect. And so the expenses were being flat all through, while the income was coming in um, for the most part. And as you can see, when you look at some of these numbers here, you know you got the labor labor revenue and then and expenses and, and their net service revenue, which were all in the, end up sh reflecting in this chart here compared to the indirect expenses. Next is going to be individual cash flow statement. Um, I wanted to show this uh, budget variance compar comparable because we want to look at how, how our net income was going in, coming in and going out. So what you see here to start out with you see, overall, one of the offices, you know, one of those main offices that we're having problems in was the loss of uh, revenue, and so we see that the variance is, but we budgeted a negative 306, but the actual ends up being a lot higher, so it's a 608, even though our prior year of that of that year was, you know, even even a lot higher um, total total amount, but our actual was almost a million. So I want to look at some a couple of reasons why it, uh, it was varied, and it had to do with the receivables and the payables. And so the receivables was one, as you see, there's 109 and 557, especially on the payable side. There's a couple of reasons why that variance was so much higher. <clears throat> and what I'm going to show here is the receivable side. Here's the, here's the budgeted for the receivable, it's at 67. And that's the trade side. So the change is 147, I mean 141,000, uh, and compared to the compared to the actual. So on the affiliate side, the affiliate side ends up being a lot higher on the budgeted than what we were actually received. So that's uh, ends up being an operation hit. And on the payable side, the payable trade. Also ends up being a lot, a little bit more negative. But on the affiliate side, affiliates, you know, our budgeted was a lot higher than what we pay. So you now that's a couple of reasons why, you're going back here, the receivables and payables are offset. So the other major area is the for negative aspect in the overall net income is the notes payable and defer liabilities. When you look at the uh, cash flow worksheet. Itself, you see that the change is at 184. And that's caused because of the finance of a positive of 121, and then other non-cash activities of a negative 60. It ends up being the uh, change of a negative 184. So when you go back to the uh, to the net decrease in cash, you see that we actually budgeted for 1193, but we only received. One one six six nine of the cash flow statement. That's the end of this presentation. Thanks for your attention.